All right, so today we're gonna to be uh, looking at a 2017 GMC Savannah van. Um, problem with this vehicle is uh, it's got some communication faults. Let's see if we can see something going on here. Sometimes it doesn't start, uh, other times it starts and has codes and communication stuff. Not started first this time, but right off the bat, I can see here that we've got no, um, no gear indicator, uh, engine lights on, ABS lights on, traction lights on. Um, so that kind of, that's kind of an indicator that we're dealing with some sort of communication issue because whenever those, uh, uh, the gear indicator doesn't light up, it usually means it can't talk to the, uh, to the TCM. Um, so I think what we're going to do first is just hook the uh, scan tool up to this vehicle and uh, see if uh, we have communication with anything or, or check to see what we do and do not have communication with. All right, we got our scan tool here now. Before I scan tool up, I have a feeling we're going to end up using the uh, line spy here, which is just a DLC breakout box. Um, that way, we can get the CAN bus wiring right at the the uh, DLC. Um, <clears throat> that way, we're not in there back probing or disturbing any of the wiring. This uh, gives us nice clean access to the uh, CAN bus wiring. Um, also, gives us a good um, a good ground here. We can just plug the uh, the leads of the scope right into it. So instead of unplugging the uh, the scan tool when I need it. I'm just going to start right off by plugging this in. It just acts as like a, a pass through for now, anyways. But um, you can see everything kind of lights up there. We got good battery power. Um, we got some activity happening on the CAN bus, so that's interesting. Um, and then we have our grounds there. So just grab the end of the dongle for the scan tool, plug it in, and we should get communication on the scan tool here, hopefully. Uh, get some sort of communication out of this thing, but we'll see in a minute. Should also add, if uh, any of you guys are just getting into diagnostics uh, or anything like that, or, or would like to get into more CAN bus diagnostics, uh, this is a must-have tool. It's really, really convenient, uh, and they're really not that expensive either. So, um, if you're just getting started with this or want to uh, kind of get better at it and uh, stuff like that, definitely get your hands on one of these. Uh, makes makes life a whole lot easier. All right, now we've got the scan tool up, so we're gonna go ahead go in and identify the vehicle. We generally use the standalone diagnostic mode on our scan tool because we don't record work orders or that kind of stuff. So we're going to go in and try and automatically select the vehicle. We're going to try and get the scan tool to read the VIN. Now usually when VIN reading fails it means that the scan tool can't make uh, communication with the PCM. So what we're going to have to do is go in and manually load this vehicle and then try and rerun a scan. So we're going to use the manual selection function here and just uh, enter the vehicle, make, model, and year. Now we're going to go ahead and run our auto scan or our full system scan. Now generally the scan runs uh, the uh, high speed CAN stuff first and you can see uh, from the previous screen there that things like the PCM and the ABS module, the transmission control module uh, didn't check in. Now it's going through the body stuff can definitely see um, the body control modules are checking in but we have nothing from the high speed CAN system or the chassis CAN system. Alright so uh, as you can see in that screen recording there uh, we have no communication with anything on the uh, high speed bus and kind of interesting that all everything on the low speed bus here uh, it's communicating, uh, but it is not showing any indication of anything being wrong at all on the low speed side. So that's just kind of one of the challenges we uh, we deal with. Um, you'd think that you know these systems would be smart enough to you know find there's an issue and, and code up, but 
Anyways, we don't really need it because we can see that there is definitely an issue with the CAN bus. So I think what we're gonna do uh, is just hook the scope up to it. And I'm just gonna get it down here at the uh, at the DLC. Just gonna plug it into our breakout box here and just see what the pattern looks like. Okay, we've got our scope out here. And this is kind of what I was talking about, how easy it is to get at this stuff. So I'm just gonna plug those two wires into the uh, chassis ground. And our CAN high and low, we'll put right here, CAN high. And low, it took me literally 30 seconds to maybe a minute to get all this stuff set up rather than you know, laying up under there and back probing or piercing the wires behind the DLC or spreading the pins. You don't want to do that. Uh, so this works a lot better. So uh, we'll just fire up the uh, Pico here. Um, take a screen recording because it's a really bright day. You probably can't see anything here. So get the screen recorder rolling and uh, see what we got going on with the CAN bus. All right, as you can see on the recording there that uh, that CAN bus looks like garbage. Um, it's pretty much mirroring itself actually, kind of, sort of, and the uh, bias voltage is all wrong, but uh, I think what we're gonna have to do now is go and take a look at the wiring diagram for this, just see what the bus wiring looks like and see if we can't isolate the problem. Um, pretty sure on these are like a chain network or something like that, so uh, if we unplug one halfway through, uh, that should be able to give us a good idea of where the issue is because um, if we unplug the module that's in the middle of the chain and it fixes itself meaning that it goes back to normal then we know that the problem is on this side of the uh, network and if it continues looking like this when we unplug that one then we know it's on the front side of that uh, network so kind of an easy way to um, split the vehicle in half so we're not just going and unplugging modules from uh, front to back or vice versa so um, I think we'll look, we'll look at the wiring diagram here and uh, get a better look at that on the uh, screen recording as well. So here's the scope shot that uh, Jordan was looking at uh, on the laptop screen. This is an unusual uh, CAN signature. Uh, that normally we would have CAN high uh, going up, CAN low going down here. They're both going up and the bias voltages are wrong. Uh, so there's definitely something wrong with the CAN signature. So I think the next thing we're going to do here is take a look at a wiring diagram. So this is the wiring diagram and all we're doing here is tracing from the DLC uh, back through the network. You can see that the first module coming off of this thing looks to be the engine control module. It's up at the top right of the screen there. And then the wires go to the next page. which take us over to the body control module. Which in this case also looks to be acting as, as a gateway. And there, from there we can go on and, and track down the rest of the network. And all we're trying to do here is get a look at uh, how this thing is wired up so we can decide which modules to um, disconnect and uh, when we disconnect modules, we're going to take a look at the network signature to see uh, whether we get an improvement or not. So let's start disconnecting some modules. All right. So, all right. So looking at our wiring diagram, there, I think we're going to start with the uh, chassis control module. It's not really halfway, but it's the easiest one to get at. So um, just roll under here quick and just unplug it. Ugh. Here we are here. Uh, that's interesting. First thing I notice here is that uh, little lock clip is broken there. If this thing would ever focus on it. Well, you get the idea. Someone's been under here, so that's never a good sign. Let's see if I can get this off one-handed. Yeah, okay, a bunch of crap come out of it. Oh. Huh. Lovely. Full of water. Cool. Well, that's good. Um, all right, let's go back up and take a look at our scope here. No, still messed up, okay. So, that means we're gonna have to move on to the next one up the chain now. We know it's not behind it at the uh, TCM. So we're gonna move forward, and I believe it was the EBCM, the brake controller under there that was uh, next in line, so. I think on these, it's right underneath here. Okay. All right. 
Okay, let's see here. Huh. Uh, oh. Alright. Well, someone's been in here too because that connector, I believe, is supposed to have a handle on it like that. Like this one here. And it doesn't. At least I think. Yeah, it's supposed to because there's a clip there that holds it in place and... Yeah, there's nothing up there to squeeze to unplug it. Oh, that's interesting. And this thing is, what is going on here? This is covered in brake fluid. What is... Oh. Alright. That's, oh, that's... Okay. Well, I think we just found our problem. That is... That has been hot. Like, very hot. And I can smell electrical burning now that my face is right near this connector, so... And it is... Oh, yeah, it's leaking. I think it's leaking brake fluid. Yeah, yeah, she's leaking. All right. Well, that, uh... Yeah, that's, that's been really hot. That's all melted paint there, so... Okay. I think we found our issue here. I am going to, uh... See if we can get them to unplug that. Um, because it's kind of difficult under here. Can't really get the good leverage on it, so I'll bring them in, bring it in and get them to do that. But uh, you know what, I may just call it for that module. That module is messed up and it's leaking brake fluid. So that's very, very, very likely what our issue is. I'll uh, see if I can get this unplugged off camera and confirm. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what we're gonna be going with here in this case, because that is uh, toasty. Okay, I couldn't get the connector off here, so I'm gonna, uh, I just went in and asked him if we can roll this thing inside. And uh, see if we can get that connector off, because I think it might be melted, maybe, a little bit. I don't know. We're gonna find out in a minute here. So I'm just gonna roll this thing in and uh, see if we can get that connector off. Put it up on the hoist, because it's just, it's a pain to, uh, mess with this thing on the ground so bring it in and see what we can do with her. We managed to get the wiring unplugged here and it was just melted in there that's why I couldn't get it off there's uh, those the arm is definitely missing but uh, that's why it wouldn't come off because it was all melted in there so it's gonna need a uh, module and a uh, connector so I'm not even gonna go look at the computer I am almost certain that's what the problem is but uh, you know what I'll lower it and we'll get a screenshot of the scope and see what it looks like but I can almost guarantee it's gonna be a lot better now all right shoot the key on yeah there we go I can see it instantly better it's not there Much better. You can see the uh, voltage scale is already uh, back to normal. A little fuzzy, probably uh, might be because that terminating resistor on the other end is not plugged in there, but um, it looks a million times better than it was. And uh, be willing to bet we probably have communication with a few things on the network now, so I'll check that too and I'll just take a screenshot and uh, include it in the video here. So, just to wrap this one up, uh, here's our scan tool screen with the uh, ABS module disconnected you can see that we now have communication with the engine control module and the body control module we've obviously got codes in them because not everything is plugged in on the network anyway uh, this one's a wrap it's going to need an ABS module and the uh, ABS module connector replaced if you like this video please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook Instagram Twitter and YouTube and if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca thanks for taking the time to watch this video